Hey everyone, how's it going? So on my mission to create a better 3D printed water pump, I've tried a few things, many of them failures, some of them minor successes, and some of them big successes. I've been working on this for the past few months, and a lot of it I didn't end up recording. I've ended up going back and forth on a few different ideas, and at the rate of my success at the time, I couldn't really be bothered to try recording anything. As a result, there's not going to be a lot of flow to this video, and I apologize for that, but here we go anyways. So what I've had the camera pointed at for the last 30 seconds is my new, relatively high pressure, low volume piston pump. The design of this pump is very similar to a standard pressure washer pump, but of course much smaller and uh, I'm not likely to develop over 1200 PSI. As I'm on the topic of pressure, I'm going to move right into what I did for a pressure test. I don't have a water pressure gauge, so I marked a piece of hose at one foot intervals and mark, hooked it up here on my window, the highest point of which is about 13 and a half feet, or just over four meters. Power for this test is gonna be my Ryobi battery, which is about 19 and a half volts. And the motors I used for this project are 12 and 24 volt rated 550 motors. I think it says 3500 or 6500 RPM on the case. I don't know. I wrecked the stickers. I don't think you can see this very well, but the water is running onto the window and pouring down at us at about the same rate it would if it was coming straight out of the pump. Doing some quick calculations, this gives us about 8 PSI. Judging by a test I did previously before something failed, I have a lot more pressure than that. Probably in the 30 to 60 PSI range. However, the 8 PSI confirmation is really all I need for most of my application. The design of this pump is rather simple. However, to get it to work rather well, it took a little bit of development. With the cutaway here, you can see the crank connecting rod and the piston. Now to note this is the one piece 3D printed crank. However depicted in this drawing is an outward bearing that is no longer in use. I had issues with this and didn't really go that way and ended up going with steel cladded sleeves. In the idea of making all of this waterproof the connecting rod uses airsoft BBs and you can see there's a little plug for the access hole in the end of the connecting rod. The piston depicted in this has two grooves however there is a single groove option and the connecting rod is connected to the piston by a six millimeter pin. The piston should be cleared out for clearance and the hole on the connecting rod left alone as the press fit. Here's the cutaway of the full ball bearing bottom end design I tried. Again this didn't end up working out. However in this cutaway you can see the part of the cylinder the glue on part that is printed the rest of the cylinder would be made out of half inch PVC pipe and that's 12.7 metric. There is a further update on the 3D printed one piece crank after long use everything warms up and the <coughs> end starts to warp even with the large bushing so I made it so it's hollow to put a steel shaft inside of it. In a perfect world, I would have liked to finish this head, however, I'm a little bit ways away from that yet. As you can see in this head design, there is a passageway for two cartridge check valves that are also 3D printed and plugs on the end that would screw on and allow access to those check valves. Now this design plans on using the same cartridge for both inlet and outlet, so obviously one's got to be upside down and one's got to be upside right. This is going to take a couple tries on the squish of the o-rings I'm going to use to seal all of this. However, since my purposes don't require this sort of valve arrangement, currently I'm not planning on finishing this right now. However, I will return to this because I would like to use this type of spring-loaded check valve for other compressors and pumps. This would allow for a lot higher top end pressure. What I ended up going with was just a simple atmosphere actuated ball valve. However, I come up with a pretty ingenious way, at least I think so, of managing this in one print. Now it definitely took me a few tries to get this right and I'm not going to get into it in too much detail but I will put the link to the double-ended barb check valves that I made and posted earlier 
this has a pretty good description of how to make this g-code work there's a few other ways of going about it so if you have your own way of doing it just ignore me at any rate a rough description is print until about layer 125 130 depending on which one you're printing and how it works out and how fine a print you're doing at that point I add a pause and tell the machine to move the head I then drop the airsoft BB inside the printed part hit the button and it goes back to what it's doing if you do this quick enough it doesn't seem to add any lines to the print however I do usually paint the other outside with clear coat just to make sure it seals real nice for the actual head it's just a block with ports in it and a way to seal it for the sake of keeping the pumps chamber volume as low as possible I made the check valve so they thread directly into the NPT fittings on the housing itself as goes standard with this sort of 3D print, I like to run a pipe tap in here and set the threads real nice, as well as running a die and using pipe dope on the fittings as well. All of this is kept on by the 20 millimeter form M4 screws, and you could use a gasket if you're running low pressure. However, I could never get a gasket to seal, so what it ended up doing is just squishing an O-ring. Now in a preferred situation I'd like to have what's called an o-ring backup or just a flat hard o-ring or even a o-ring from a garden hose might do the job. I also made a head that houses an o-ring. I did get this to work. I ended up having issues with the piston I was using at the time and thought it was the head so I swapped it out. Like I said before most of the parts on this pump have gone through three or four iterations before I've got anything worth showing to anyone. I did run into a problem after running this pump for quite a while. I'd like to make a note of it because I didn't really cover it during the installation that I'm going to talk about later. When initially installing the plug in the end of the connecting rod, it's quite a tight fit. But I guess after a while it decided to pound its way out. So during original installation, make sure that you put some super glue on this so it's not going anywhere. Also, I'm sure most of you noticed that some of this is shot with a belt drive and some of it has a gear drive. Now, I actually prefer the belt drive and both files will be shared below, but the O-rings I was using were a little bit too short and I kept breaking them, so I switched to gears just to save me breaking O-rings. At the stage I'm at right now, it's pretty much good for general purpose use. There's only one big issue, if you've noticed, this thing shakes a lot. And not just the pump itself, the actual water shakes a lot. This, in the plumbing sense, is referred to as hammering. Hammering is very destructive to basically anything. To mitigate this problem, you need what's called an accumulator or a hammer arrester. On the video, I have chosen an uh, accumulator as more of an arrester, but arrester is basically the same thing, which is the smaller volume. Now, of course, the larger the volume, the more shake it takes out of the system. If you were going to use this to run water through some sort of radiator, this would be required. Otherwise, it would just destroy any solder joints on the radiator very quickly. Really, for the most part, plastic parts should hold up all right. As with their increased elasticity, they run pretty good. But if you're running this in cold environments with some sort of antifreeze, it still might have a tendency to break things and cause leaks. That being the really only disadvantage of this pump, the other one being is it's completely positive displacement, which means if it did run across some sort of blockage, it would stall it completely and cause the motor to fail, if not a fire. With that on the improved head, I intend to implement some sort of relief valve. I'd like to make this adjustable for intended use case, and with the other check valves, it should be a pretty decent system. As you can see here, I've been running it pretty fast for a decent amount of time. And overall, I've had it running for about 12 hours on this pump and about 18 hours on the same pump with a different set of bearings. There is one other issue at running it at high speed. This doesn't come out really well on video, but there's bubbles coming out of the exhaust of the pump. However, no air going to the inlet of the pump. The pump isn't leaking, at least as not as much as the air is going through it. This means that it's probably cavitating, and in short, cavitation is a little explosion caused from the water collapsing into a vacuum. This has a tendency to eat at the ends of the piston, or gears if it's a gear pump that does it, and will eventually erode the end of the piston right off. 
I actually haven't seen much for cavitation effect plastic, so I'm not too worried about it. I don't actually intend to run this at any great speed like this. However, if you were to do this for any length of time, it should be run with some sort of pressurized feed like you would a normal pressure washer. You could probably get away with one of those little garden pumps that runs off USB or something. Having that extra inlet pressure and not causing as much of a vacuum will decrease the cavitation. However, this doesn't seem to be as much of a problem at lower RPMs. And that's about all I got on this for now. As per usual, the files will be listed in the description. I did actually intend to do a build section of this video, but I don't have enough footage and I'd like to get this out. I originally intended to have this video out before Christmas, so... At any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll be back with more later. Have a good one, guys.